Hey guys, welcome back to another electrical video. In this video, I'll be showing you step-by-step step how I add an exterior light to the right side of this door. The wall I'll be working on is concrete block. On the opposite side of that concrete block wall, where I'm going to be placing the light fixture, you can see there's two switches. When you have a concrete block home, on the inside of the concrete block, you have furring strips. That's one inch by two inch strips that actually measure three quarters of an inch thick by an inch and a half wide. Those strips are secured to the concrete block and then drywall is secured to the furring strips. The result is you're going to be left with a three quarter inch space between the drywall and the concrete block. When the masons are installing the blocks, typically they're going to take a flat end of the concrete block, place it towards the doorway, and sometimes they'll also pour the core of those blocks. Now what I'm hoping to do here, straight up about 8 inches in, I need to go up about 2 feet and drill right through the wall and that's where the electrical box is going to be mounted. If you take a neodymium magnet, a strong one like you see right here, this is an N45 I believe, 1 inch cylinder. I can see if there's conduit behind the walls and you can see right here, there's a conduit going up and there's another one. So I know there's an electrical box right here, a double. The knockout on the top left is more than likely going to have a half inch EMT. And you can see it's going up, all right? And over here is nothing. And very close to the edge is going to be a furring strip. So there's a space here. There's EMT going up, EMT going this way. And over here, all right? You can see there's another conduit going to the left, way down there to an electrical receptacle above the kitchen counter. So I have a very good idea what's behind this wall. Now the switch right over here used to be for an old fixture that's no longer used. If I had a fixture that was being used, I can very easily add an extra switch here by taking the single decor switch out and installing a double. The double would have a switch going left and right on the bottom and left and right on the top. Let me open this up so we can take a closer look inside. Okay, the cover's off. It's always a good idea to take a utility knife and just go around the edges. And by doing that, you'll prevent the paint on the wall from peeling back. With the power turned off, I'm now going to remove each one of these switches. Give you a better look at the inside. So we do have a conduit right here, heading all the way off to the left that the magnet showed. There's a conduit here going up that the magnet showed. And I'm wondering why I'm showing something here too. It's possible there's a piece of wood right here with some nails in it because I do not see any knockout with a pipe in it over here. So just the one going up and the one going to the side. Go between here, the ground, and the bottom, nothing. And over here we'll do the top and the bottom. So power is 100% off. You always want to double check before touching any of the wiring. Looking inside the electrical box, I can see that the power for both of these switches is coming from the left, from this conduit right here. So you can see the black wire comes down, goes into this wire nut, and you can see there's a black wire going to this switch and a black wire going to this switch. Now if you take a look inside the box right here, you can see the concrete block. This is a pretty shallow box. It looks like it's about an inch and a quarter thick. So you have the box nailed directly to the concrete block, then you have your furring strip, and then you have probably five eighths of an inch thick of that plaster sheet. Now there are a couple of alternatives for mounting the light outside. When the box is mounted, I can drill a hole, and if possible, I may be able to find a hollow core inside the concrete block. If that's the case, I could push the wire into the concrete block, drop it straight down, and I could take it right out through this opening right here. I can drill this out with a carbide bit. I could put a bushing in here, pull an underground feeder cable right into this box. If that doesn't work, I can probably utilize 
the pipe that's here already, maybe follow this wire up into the attic and then route it back down into the light. Or I can take another knockout out, place a little bushing in here and push another cable straight up, grab it and pull it directly outdoors. So let's go outside, let me position the box and I'll show you exactly how I'm going to mount it. What I need to do is take this four inch diameter pancake box, it's steel, I need to recess it into this concrete block wall. I'm going to position it right around here. So I'm going to trace this right here. In order to recess this electrical box, what I'll be doing is drilling a series of holes very close together using this larger carbide bit. Just go all the way around, only about a half of an inch deep. When all the holes are drilled, the next thing is I'm gonna take this cold chisel and flatten everything down. With the electrical box in position and a hole drilled into the wall outside, the next step is to take the carbide drill and drill a hole right in the center where that knockout is, and hopefully I'll be able to drop an underground feeder cable from the outside hole at the top down about two feet and grab it at this hole right here. There's no guarantee I'll be able to do it because of how the blocks are arranged, but we're going to give that a try first. That part looks pretty good, at least there was no divider inside the concrete block lined up directly with this hole. To make it much easier to work behind this box, what I did after drilling with the half inch bit, I bumped it up to the three quarter inch bit. Now let's take a look inside that wall looking up using my inspection camera. You can see looking up into the concrete block wall, the cores are wide open, so I shouldn't have too much trouble pushing a 12-2 underground feeder cable from the outside hole where the light is all the way down to this box. Stranded number 18 with a lead sinker on it. I'm going to insert it outside where the electrical box is, and gravity is going to let it fall down into the wall. I'll just keep jingling it, and when I see it inside that hole, I'll hook onto it and pull it out. Nothing on this side, and on this side, I can see the sinker. All right, let me lower it down a little bit more. Now you can see it's right behind the hole. What I'm going to do is reach in with a hook, try and pull the sinker through this hole, and then I'm going to tie the underground feeder cable 
onto the 18 gauge wire. Okay, let me go outside. Okay, perfect. The cable is now secure inside the box. I stripped off the jacket of the underground feeder cable, stripped the ends of the wires, and you can see way in the back where the cable passes into the box, there's a clamp type connector. It's made out of plastic. Right here is a much better look at the clamp. In order to connect this up now, what I'm going to do, you see the white wire, ties into the white wires. I'm going to take this white wire right over here. It's going to be added to this connection here. The ground wire is going to be connected to the ground, connected to the switch. The other end up here connects to this side of the switch where the ground screw is. The black wire on top goes to where the power comes in from this cable, so we're going to leave that alone. The black wire at the bottom goes up into this cable. So what I'm going to do is disconnect the wire at the bottom and I'm going to connect the black wire right here. So power is going to come in from right here to the switch. When the switch is on, 120 volts jumps over to this screw, sending power into the black wire. The black wire goes to the fixture outside. Let me connect this up and then we'll go outside. Okay, everything is back together. The only issue is going to be pushing it back into this shallow box. Not going to be easy. There's a wire nut in the bottom, kind of big. You have to position it in between the two switches. There's one over here on this side with all the neutrals. You have to tuck it off to the upper right hand corner. And you can see the ground wire is tied to the existing ground wire. And both switches are connected together using the ground wire. In case you're wondering, the conduit from this metal box goes directly to the electrical panel. So that's the grounding system for this setup. Right here you can see the cable going through the metal box. There's a rubber bushing that the underground feeder cable slid through. The hot and neutral stripped ready to go. Ground screw on the metal box with the ground wire. Before the lights installed I'm going to turn on the power. Take the bar meter and check between the hot and the ground and the hot and the neutral. Let's check between the metal box and hot. Good. And now between neutral and hot. Very good. And here you can see the motion light all powered up. Looks like it's been here for years. And that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, and share. Thanks for watching.